Hello and welcome. Now, we have previously looked at how water and mineral salts are absorbed from the soil into the roots of the plant. Then the question is, how do these substances then move from the roots to the other parts of the plant where they will be utilized? So in this lesson, we look at the forces involved in this movement of water and mineral salts up the plant once they've been absorbed into the roots. There are a number of forces that are involved which all act together to move water and mineral salts up the plant. So we look at each one of them in turn and understand how they contribute to the movement of water up the plant. And we will start with the forces of cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is a force of attraction between similar molecules. For example, when water molecules are attracted to one another and therefore stick together, that is said to be due to force of cohesion. While adhesion, that is force of adhesion, is a force of attraction between different molecules. For example, in the xylem, water molecules adhere to the surfaces of the wall of the xylem. Within the wall of the xylem, there are molecules that attract the water molecules. So if you look at, this is a xylem, and the blue circles here represent water molecules moving up. Now if we take one bit and enlarge it, so here you see these are water molecules. The force of attraction between two water molecules is the cohesion force. While the force of attraction between the water molecule and the wall of the xylem is the adhesion force. <clears throat> so as this water molecule is attracted to the wall of the xylem, it moves up slightly. And as it moves up slightly, it will pull along another water molecule below it by force of cohesion. So there will be total movement. That is, the water molecule is pulled up by adhesion force by the xylem wall. And as it moves up, it will pull along another water molecule below it by force of cohesion. So the process is repeated over and over again, right from the top of the plant, that is within the xylem in the leaves, and it continues all the way down to the roots. So through cohesion and adhesion, a water column, a continuous water column is maintained in the xylems, running from the roots to the leaves because the water molecules are, are attached to the walls of the xylem and they are also attached to one another. So in this way, the cohesion and adhesion forces maintain a continuous column of water in the xylem vessels running from the roots to the leaves. The second force is capillarity. <coughs> capillarity. Capillarity is the tendency of water to rise in narrow tubes. Water rising up narrow tubes known as capillarity. And the narrower the tube, the faster the rate of capillarity. Now this can be demonstrated in the lab when you put some water in a trough. And in the trough we place capillary tubes of different diameters. After some time, water will rise up each capillary tube. And the distance travel depends on the diameter. The narrower the tube, the higher the distance. So you can see here, in this tube that is narrowest, the level of water is greatest, 
followed by the next one in terms of diameter says so that the the tube with the widest diameter shows a very low capillarity so the narrower the tube the higher the tendency of water to rise up that tube the lumen of xylem tracheids and vessels are structurally very narrow to promote capillarity so through capillarity water does move from the roots up the plant and as mentioned the xylem vessels are particularly adapted to promote capillarity in them the third factor the third force is the root pressure this is the force that pushes water that has been absorbed from the soil to move up the stem. Now, if a plant, if the stem of a plant is cut above the soil level, water or cell saps will continue to ooze out that from the cut surface for some time. That is, if we cut the stem of a plant, in many plants you'll still be able to see water oozing out from the cut surface. This shows that there must be a force in the root that continues to push the water upward. Such so that by the time the water gets to the cut surface, it oozes out and drips. Now, this force that pushes the water up the xylem is what we call the root pressure. That is the root pressure. And root pressure is generated using energy. This energy comes from the endodermis. The endodermal cells actively pump mineral salts into the xylem. Salts then raise the osmotic pressure of the xylem so that as more and more water gets absorbed from the soil, traveled by osmosis through the epidermis, the cortical cells, and into the endodermis, then from this point henceforth, there is active movement first of the soles then because of the increased osmotic pressure in the xylem water will then flow into the xylem by osmosis so there is active movement of salts which results in movement of water into the xylem so the force with which the water molecules will move into the xylem as a result of osmosis is what is known as the root pressure. Now, it is necessary that endodermis pumps or secrete salts into the xylem because the xylem is hollow, does not have any solutes of its own. So the endodermis pumps in salts. The salts raise osmotic pressure and this facilitates the movement of water into the xylem. So the force with which the water molecules enter the xylem then generates the root pressure, which acts upward. And as it acts upward, it pushes the water and mineral salts up the stem and toward the leaves. The fourth force is the transpiration pool. Now, transpiration pool is a sanctioned force. It is a sanctioned force generated in the leaves that pulls a stream of water from the xylem in the stem and the roots. The force, that is the sanction force, is generated by evaporation of water molecules 
and as they escape through the open stoma, they pull other molecules behind them. So as water evaporates, so this, you look at, this is the, within the leaf, within the leaf, from the surfaces of the mesophyll cells, water evaporates. And as the water molecules evaporate, then they escape by diffusion through the stoma. And as they escape, they pull other molecules behind them by force of cohesion. So these evaporating and escaping water molecules pull others behind them, which then move to replace the escaped water molecules. The water molecules that have been pulled as a result of the escaping water molecules then pull more water molecules from behind them and these in turn pull others behind them creating a pool, a continuous pool that extends all the way to the stem and the roots. So the escaping water molecules pull the molecules behind them by cohesion force. And then this pulling between water molecules, which begins at the mesophyll cells in the leaves, continues in the xylem of the leaf, then the xylem of the stem, and all the way down to the roots. So from the xylem in the roots, there's a continuous pull. Remember, this force, the sanction force, is created by the evaporation from the surfaces of the mesophyll cells. So as the, evap as the water evaporates and diffuses out, the water molecules pull those molecules behind them, and those in turn pull others behind them. So it's like a chain reaction. It's a chain pulling. The, the force beginning from the surfaces in the leaves or any other evaporation surface. So as the water escape, they pull others behind them, which in turn pull those behind them. And this pulling continues all the way to the xylem within the roots. In fact, transpiration pull is the main force responsible for the rising up of water and mineral salts in a plant. So it is this transpiration pull that maintains in a large way, the continuous column of water, starting from the roots, extending, that is starting from the roots, continuous column of water starting from the roots, extending to the stem and all the way to the leaves. This transpiration pool is important in that it replaces the water that has been lost through transpiration. So as evaporation takes place and transpiration occurs, as a result of the force of cohesion, the escaping water molecules pull those behind them to take up their place, and those in turn pull others behind them. So this pooling continues all the way to the roots thereby creating a continuous column of water that flows from the roots to the leaves. Now, this continuous flow of water from the root up the stem to the evaporating surfaces of the leaves is what is known as transpiration stream. It's a continuous column of water flow from the roots. Basically, it begins from the soil through the root tissues to the xylem, up through the stem, leaves, and then evaporates to the atmosphere. So this continuous flow of water from the root up the stem and to the evaporating surface in the leaves is what is known as transpiration stream. A transpiration stream is not the same as transpiration pool. Transpiration pool is a sanction force that pulls the water up from the roots to the evaporating surfaces.
while transpiration stream is that continuous flow of water from the root up the stem to the evaporating surface. So transpiration stream is a flow. Transpiration pool is a force. Relationship, transpiration pool creates and maintains the transpiration stream. Transpiration stream is important because it is through that stream that the water that has been lost through the evaporating surfaces is replaced from the roots. Now we can look at a summary of all the processes that are involved in the absorption and uptake of water in a plant. So as a summary, the process begins in the roots where water is absorbed by osmosis. So from the soil solution, water gets into the root hair cells, by osmosis into the cortical cells and all the way to the xylem in the roots. Once in the xylem of the roots, the continuous flow of water molecules into the xylem of the roots generates a force, which you call the root pressure. This root pressure will then push water up the xylem and toward the stem. While this is happening, because of the structural feature of the xylem being very narrow, hollow tube, capillarity will also be in action. So the narrowness of the xylem tube contributes to the rising of water up the stem. And as this is taking place, transpiration will also be taking place and as water evaporates and diffuses out, it generates transpiration pool. The transpiration pool will then contribute to further rise of water molecules. And of course, within the vessels, there is also adhesion force and cohesion force. So as the water molecules rise up, they are pulled up by addition force, and as the individual molecules rise up, they also pull those behind them by force of cohesion. So that now we have a combination of all these forces that contribute to the rising up of water from the roots to the leaves.